And some experts are saying now that the whole world is heating up because of a global greenhouse effect. That is heat caught in the atmosphere by air pollution that prevents its escape. NBC's Robert Hager explains. In Washington, a Senate committee heard some scientists say the phenomenon known as the greenhouse effect is here. The problems unaddressed have the potential for turning the world into a form of chaos not greatly different from that produced by global war. concrete evidence of the benefits of CO2 and the detrimental effects are at the very least questionable. How is it that we've been led to take talk of catastrophe seriously? After all, it's only some 15 years since a rather different global climate catastrophe was in vogue. There's the ever-present threat of a big freeze. Will a new ice age claim our lands and bury our northern cities? It's buried Manhattan Island before, when great glaciers half a mile thick filled the valley of New York's Hudson River. You do accept that sort of 10, 15 years ago, people were talking about a global cooling, not a global warming. Yeah. People were talking about global cooling uh, 15 years ago, but not everybody. Uh, I was one who was not sure. You say you didn't believe in global cooling, but in your first book you said, I've cited many examples of recent climatic variability and repeated the warnings of several well-known climatologists that a cooling trend has set in, perhaps one akin to the Little Ice Age. Mm -hmm. Well, that was just 14 years ago. Yeah. So. I, I said that because at the time it was true. But you've got to be honest. You've got to tell things the way they are. I don't mind people quoting what I had to say in the 70s. But doesn't all of that add up to saying that you're asking governments to spend billions of dollars on a view which is different from one you held a decade ago. I don't see any problem in saying that people learn. I'm not embarrassed about the view I had a decade ago. You should remember that when I was going to graduate school, it was gospel that the Ice Age was about to start. And to tell the truth, I had trouble warming up to that one, too. So this is not the first. It is certainly the loudest of the, of the climate apocalypses, but it is not the first. There may be many reasons why we might want to believe in an apocalypse, but for the scientists involved, some of them are very straightforward. It's easier to get funding if, if you can show some evidence for impending climate disasters. Uh, in the late 1970s, of course, it was the, uh, the coming ice age, and now it's the coming global warming. Who knows what it will be 10 years from now. Uh, but sure, uh, science benefits from from some scary scenarios. A lot of people are getting very famous and very well known and very well funded as a result of uh, promoting the disastrous uh, scenario of greenhouse warming. My suspicion would be that, that um, if one has a crisis like this, it, it's easier to gain funds for the, for the profession as a whole. Funding may have encouraged belief in the greenhouse theory, but if you oppose the theory, life can get difficult. I was warned when I wrote my first paper, which discussed um, a difference between the climate models and some numbers that I was looking at for the tropics alone, that it would be very difficult and that my funding would probably be cut. And in fact, it has been cut. Did you believe that at the time? No, I didn't. I thought that the system was so straightforward and, and honest that it, the... Uh, bringing in a new idea and a new perspective into the whole thing, which I thought I did in 1979, would actually be considered to be a positive thing and that people would like to look at both sides of the argument and then have a debate. Well, of course, in some ways, uh, one could say it's been successful the, in terms of raising funds, that by going around saying there's a crisis around the corner, people are talking about putting in more funds and so forth, and maybe it's worked. Perhaps it's worked. Perhaps I was wrong. But I think that it, it's, it's going to backfire Richard Lindzen has recently said that uh, this whole area of global warming has sort of become a new McCarthyism. And if you don't jump on the environmental bandwagon to stop the inevitable warming that the Earth is going to undergo, that you're going to be ostracized from the scientific community and, 
and from everybody else's community because um, it's not fashionable to disagree with uh, the environmentalists these days. I have you know, had experience with editors where, where I have asked questions as to why something was rejected. And this has occurred in, with more than one journal and have been told that your papers are held to a higher standard of review than others. I've been literally told that. Um, For what grounds did they hold Because you? of what they say. I mean, that's fine, okay, if they want to be that way. You know, I'm a big boy. I've been fairly successful. I know that I would have been more successful probably if I'd say the world's coming to an end, but I just can't quite bring myself to do that. Of course, it's not only been the scientists. The media also benefits from a good disaster story. Storms, cyclones, drought, high winds and floods. A foretaste of global warming, a change in the climate caused by man's pollution of the planet. The climate is okay does not usually make the headlines. And the best prophets of doom are the ones filmed most. The rate of change is so fast that I don't hesitate to call that kind of change potentially catastrophic for ecosystems. There are statements made of such overt unrealism that uh, I feel embarrassed. I feel it discredits my science. And I think there could arise problems where one will need to depend on scientific judgment. And uh, by ruining our credibility now, we leave society with a diminished resource of some importance. Well, of course you always tell the truth, but how many of us ever get on the evening news in more than 23 seconds? Can you give the whole story in 23 seconds? You have to selectively give bits of information. And if the scientists and the media have connived to make a good story, the politicians have not been slow to see the advantages to them. We would be taking a great risk with future generations if, having received this early warning, we did nothing about it, or just took the attitude, well, it'll see me out. Why do you think it is that politicians, and indeed Congress, have been <coughs> convinced that there has been global warming? I don't know that they've been convinced, but their business is to be responsive to their constituents. And their constituents are convinced. It would certainly not be in their best political interest to not act convinced, would it? So the people want to believe this. And politicians have to respond somewhat to the people's wants. They can't say to their constituents, you are stupid, can they? I mean, this thing is being fought with dull knives and zip guns. I don't know if you realize that. There's a lot of blood on this thing. In what way? People hate each other about this issue. You haven't noticed that? You ever seen a nastier scientific issue? Why do you think that is? I don't know. I guess because people passionately feel that it's a battle between good and evil. If the consequences of the greenhouse theory did not extend beyond a moral crusade, it could be left to those with a religious turn of mind. But it cannot be so lightly ignored. Would you march down the road toward a policy which people have rightfully said requires our economic restructuring of the world, knowing that the world was behaving opposite to what the basis for that policy said. Mm -hmm.